So now we'll move on towards the emergency uh, braking. This is um, where the participant learns to uh, brake as quick as possible, as hard as possible towards the standstill. Emergency, it sometimes just decides to the electronics decide sometimes to just turn give off. Me, yeah, give me the, okay. the radio. <laughs> killed that phone. He was well killed. He was well killed. I, I, I honestly, like, I, I was not 60. He was right. He was not 60. There's one person who's gonna fail this. It's gonna be kind of yeah. Well, I'm really sure <laughs> judging this. This is this as you can see. I should have followed Jankos actually. I think I just outperformed everyone, maybe except for Niels, but I think Graus was really good stand. And the funny thing is, I'm mostly, uh, you know, fighting against him. And let's not look at the overall, uh, you know, uh, outcome. Let's just look at the fact that I was just. Uh, okay. <laughs> It's actually tougher than you think because the tires are, are, are pretty good and, and the brakes are pretty good. So, yeah. It's, Can you smell the rubber? Yeah, I love it. I love it from inside as well. It's good. The braking itself is super easy, but um, if you if you don't have a reference point, you need to stop at a certain point. That's really hard to nail. So now we're moving on towards the emergency lane change. During this avoidance exercise, it's very important that the car stays as stable as possible when they steer too aggressive or brake too early or release the throttle too early, it maybe upset the car and the car starts to slide. I think the lane change was difficult for me because you have to basically turn at the right moment and every time I hit it I could hear the sound like I was like calling myself a lot of names in the car um, to finally be able to do it and then when I did it I was so so happy with myself. Finally! Nice! Both Jankos and Graves did a great job. Like they just got their driver licenses a few months ago and they barely drove anything so it was really nice. But now it's a real life James Bond within you, it's time to unleash the beast. Especially for you, Carlos. Oh uh, no. Uh, <laughs> very smoothly on the brakes, put it in D and then you continue. Okay, and okay. Then, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So first the small movement and then the big one and then the car is turning. Is there a simple way to explain it? Or? You just drive backwards and yank at the steering wheel as hard as you can. <laughs> This one is a little tougher, though, I gotta say. Carlos screwed it up a lot at the, at, at the beginning, which made me very happy because I felt like when he was changing lanes, he wouldn't screw up, so I was like really jealous. But then when he was screwing up the last one, I was like... <laughs> um, the best for me felt actually the agent turn. It was fun and felt great and uh, I could do it all day. Just did this 007 agent. If you ask the instructor, he probably will tell you, you know, way above the average uh, for the group. Like, <laughs> that's Janko's laughing. <laughs> so the agent turn, I think, is the most, the most nice thing, just because it's the one I, I never did before. And you always see that in the movies, of course, and then being able to somewhat do it yourself and understanding what actually happened. We have been talking about the drifting, and I mean, we've 
secretly been practicing a little on, on the way back to, to our parking position, which of course we're not, not allowed to do. Going back to my place, what Peter tells us, go slowly. So I was just drifting all the way. Yeah, this is great! I had so much fun. I mean, I really had so much fun. Before going into the final parkour, my only goal was that my number is smaller than Jankos' number. Um, that was literally the only thing I wanted to achieve. It didn't matter how long it would take me. That was always this competitive side to it. Can I do it better than the others? 